Hello all, thank you very much for visiting this video. Uh, it's going to be showing you the uh, galaxy embossing background that I shared on Facebook the other night. A lot of you have asked how I did it and uh, how it came about. Truthfully it was an accident but as many things are in craft they're really just happy accidents. So I've put the video together in as much as real time as possible. Um, I have taken out a couple of bits which weren't really relevant anyway. Um, apart from that, there's nothing else to it, apart from just sitting back and enjoying, have a cup of tea. Um, if you've got any questions or comments after the video, feel free to comment on the blog post or at the bottom of the screen on YouTube, and I'll do my best to get back to them. Thank you very much for your time, and enjoy the video. For this technique, I've used some real basic supplies. I've used some Cosmic Shimmer uh, embossing powders. These are the ones with lusters. Uh, some perfect pearls, I chose gold but you could choose another colour, an embossing stamp pad with clear and a heat tool. So I'm just going to clear my work desk so that we can get to the cardstock underneath. It's just basic plain white cardstock, about 250 GSM or £80 if you're in uh, uh, other currencies. I'm just taking the embossing stamp pad and inking all over the cardstock getting real good coverage because I want my embossing first layer of embossing powders to stick really well. You can obviously use Perfect Medium perhaps or any other embossing uh, stamp pad that you've got. So the first um, embossing powder layer that I'm going to create is just a random selection of the four embossing powders that I showed. You can obviously put as much or as little of each colour as you like. There's no rules. It's all just a happy accident. For this technique, I did start heating from the front, but realised this was probably an error. As you can see, some of the embossing powder started blowing away. I thought I would get away with it, but I, I obviously couldn't. Um, so I started heating from the back and uh, to be honest I suddenly remembered that I actually bought this the other week. It's uh, a little grid for firing your chips on but it's uh, made of Teflon so it's heat resistant. So it actually holds your work flat as you're heating from behind and doesn't mean that you, it means that you can um, keep your fingers clear and also at the same time you can uh, heat from behind. So as you can see it's starting to melt now all the colours blending into one, uh, almost like marbled effect. It's great fun to watch, quite re relaxing and therapeutic. As you can see, I'm taking it quite slowly and just working my way around. There's a lot of embossing powder there because they've got little heaps of it around as you can see. Um, so just take it slowly and just heat gently. Now that I've got most of it done, I'm transferring the heat to the top of the cardstock and just blending in all the remaining embossing powder. Doesn't look like much of a galaxy at the moment, but this is just the first layer, remember. We're, we're going to do at least two more. Some of the thicker parts will take longer to to melt. So just keep your, your torch or your heat tool moving around and applying the heat to the bits that need it. I think I'm just about done now. 
I'm going to add some more now. I'm actually choosing a couple of different colours this time uh, and also combining that with the colours from the original layer. I use four colours. There's no hard and fast rules here. You could use two, you could use six, you could use as many as you've got really. One thing I could mention here is that the, the more heaped your embossing powder, the more it will spread. And this is what's giving us that sort of spreading effect and, and, and creating the swirls later on in the design. So just have a think about, you know, uh, where you want some of the, the colours to come through. It's all going to get very messy and swirly later on anyway, so it doesn't really matter exactly how you put it down now. As you can see, some of the embossing powder balls up and spreads across as you heat from the front, especially if you've not left it um, too long on the back. That's absolutely fine, it's part of what we want with this process. It's really just creating a mess, I guess. Okay, that's second layer done. Now for a bit more on the third layer. Again, maybe put alternate colours on top of each other. This is going to help spread and create rings of colour or um, help create the sort of uh, dramatic effects that you'll get towards the end of this, this technique. It's not a big bit of card that I'm working on, it's only around A6. Um, realistically, I'm aiming to have an artist trading card after this, which is about three and a half inches by two and a half. So I'm not looking to create too much, and I don't really want to waste a lot of my embossing powder. But really, you know, you can create this in small areas on another project, or just really sort of go crazy and create a big old massive mess. It's great when you start to see all the colours sort of blending into each other and starting to move. That's when we know we're getting close to the next stage. Can you see on the right, on the left, sorry, how the colours are starting to sort of separate and create nice little patterns? That's exactly what we want. And here we go in the middle and the top as well. Fantastic. Okay, I think the third layer is just about melted enough.
Now we're moving on to apply some perfect pearls. This is obviously mica, so it's very highly reflective and, uh, and swirls around in molten um, plastics like embossing powders. So it's going to give us that fantastic luster. I'm being quite generous here because I want lots and lots of depth in this um, mica layer and I want it to be able to spread through the different layers as well because there is some sort of clears in that embossing powder. Oh, I like that one. That looks like a, a mountain on a moon or something. Do make sure you put the top on the pot, especially if you're prone to sneezing or using your heat tool and blowing dust everywhere. Because as you'll see in the next uh, section, coming right up now, even though I'm applying the heat uh, from quite a distance away, it's still starting to spread that mica. I'm being as gentle as I possibly can while it starts to embed itself in the embossing powder. I suppose I could have actually gone on to heat from behind again, but with that much embossing powder, the layers are now quite thick, so it might take some time. So I was just being quite impatient on this. And in actual fact, spreading it thin like this, I guess, will give me a, a, another effect. Okay, there we go, you can see ma the majority of the mica powder, apart from a couple of spots, is all melted in now. So I'm just going to actually start uh, heating the piece, but I'm going to heat it at an angle. And what this is going to do is make the embossing powder and the mica run. And I want this to happen because I want to start creating now the stripes and the swirls and, and everything that come in the, the gal galactic clouds. So you can see towards the bottom of the page that there are ridges forming as it's starting to sort of run and uh, ooze towards the bottom of the page. I actually want a piece of this to fall off because I want a little piece, of, a chunk, to remelt in later. And you can see at the top of the page now how that mica powder is separating and causing little striations and little jagged bits. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Here comes the little rivulet of gold. And it's dripping off onto my glass mat now. And I'm just letting that run and swirl out. There's no plan to this, it's just a case of letting it go. I'm just going to pop that down for a moment. After I've shown you what it looks like. You can see all that mica now sitting towards the surface, creating the reflection and the, the dazzle. And there's my little sort of gold blobules. 
I'm going to keep them because I want to use them again later. They cool very quickly on that glass mat, so you can almost pick it up straight away, as you can see. Oh, still quite hot though. So here's just a couple of snapshots that I took of this uh, stage. And I just wanted to show you an idea of what they look like in, di in different light. So now I'm going back in and I'm remelting again and that's basically how this um, technique is done. It's just remelting and re-oozing or moving the embossing powder and the mica around the page. You can choose to stop at any point. I tend to sort of overdo things and keep going for a bit longer than I should. But as long as the result is what you want, that's what counts. And do keep turning it and heating different areas and seeing how things melt together and whether you need to move something else around. I'm now mostly concentrating the heat in sort of the upper area because I want that to start moving towards the lower area and causing little ripples. You can see now how there's different intensities of both colour and mica powders that have been going on across the, uh, across the page. And you can see there how it's all starting to run towards the bottom really quickly. That's fantastic. Again, I'm just turning it around so I can control where that rivulet of, of gold and colour is going and also you can sort of lower the angle and then start heating the ridges so that they then flatten back into the design. Look at that marbled effect now, that's fantastic. Okay, so that's where we're at at the moment. What I'm now going to do is bring in that uh, little globule of gold that we saved, that I saved from earlier. And I'm going to choose an area where to put it. It's really not going to make a difference too much. In all fairness, I could have actually just melted this slightly in and uh, let it run, uh, sorry, let it sit as it was if I was going through a, for a 3D look. But for this, I wanted to sort of melt it in. And what's going to happen now is the um, micas and colours in that piece are going to sort of start to melt and separate and sink into the design and then spread out what's already there and that's exactly again what I wanted and again it's a brilliant process when you see it happening because it all just sort of starts to um, almost burst and then splurge out So you can see there's a lot of heat in that one area, so everything's moving with uh, both the heat and the airflow. I'm just now using a craft pick to drag uh, a line or two through the molten embossing powder. And again, what this is going to do is um, take colours from one area, put them in another, 
transfer the mica powder across the page and then I can use the heat tool to actually start moving uh, that colour and that mica powder into little ridges or little lines and you can see how it's starting to form almost that galaxy cloud look now. Again, adjust the angle if you need things to flow in a different way. Now I'm just adding extra tiny bits of embossing powder to certain areas, again to dilute what's there and perhaps bring in another colour. This for me is almost going to um, create an eye of a galaxy or, or the central part that you often see lit up from inside. I sound like Professor Brian Cox now, don't I? Ooh, look at the star. You can see how a little though has created quite a big dot. Just a small um, piece of embossing or droplet of embossing powder has created something about the size of a five pence or a twenty pence piece. And again, you saw me using the craft pick there just to drag a line out, but I'm making sure to heat it so that, that melts right back in. If all it's done is just given me that uh, almost definition of line. I guess you could create a fossil look in the same way if you have the right colour combination of embossing powders. Again here you can see I'm trying to melt everything so that it runs down the page and creates different layers and effects. Look at that! That's amazing! What do they call that one? Is it the Crab Nebula? Or the Lobster Cloud? difficult to see I think in the video but it's very subtle there are different layers of mica and there are different layers of colour and it's fantastic to see good to do this technique on a cold winter's day as well. If you're watching this in summer that makes no sense. But when I'm doing this it's snowing outside and the heat coming off this table now is fantastic. It's warming my nose. You can see now how that whole mass is quite molten and it's quite easy to move, even just by tilting the page up a little bit. So I think I'm just about done on that stage. Maybe just a tiny bit more heating here and there. You can see how reflective it is as well. I think I'm just going to run off another couple of rivulets and globules. These are good words, aren't they? Just melting that back in a little bit so it doesn't drop off. Okay, what do you think now? Looking good, isn't it? Everything's starting to swirl together, the mic is sort of infused throughout the design. Lots of cloud things going on, and again, under different lights, it takes on totally different colourways and different properties. Fantastic, isn't it? 
Again, I'm just doing this a second time as I had that second rivulet. There's no need to, you can stop whenever you like. Just a couple of tips before the video comes to a close, by the way. I generally try and cut the design or cut out the bit that I'm going to use using a pair of sharp scissors before um, the embossing powder has had a chance to cool. And the reason for this is because I didn't want it to crack. If it did, I could have remelted it, I guess. But I found it much easier just to maybe within 30 seconds, let it cool for about 30 seconds, and then just use a pair of scissors to cut out the piece that I'm going to use, just a large chunk from the middle. Do mind out a few fingers though, because it will still be very hot. So you can see a bit more swirling with the craft pick. Spreading it out again with the heat and the air from the heat tool. Just thinking ahead, I think what I'm going to do with this when I've finished is cut it down to size for the artist trading card and then use some swirls of mini gems to look like they're the suns in the galaxy. Best of all. I think by this point I was probably quite mesmerised um, in how the colours are running together. I'm not actually thinking of what I'm doing. I think. <laughs> Do you ever get like that? now starting to wonder what this would look like on a giant canvas. And you imagine the heating that would take. I'm just now expanding that uh, central area of the galaxy there. You can see how the colours have come through from the bottom as well. And how the mica has spread. Right, I think I'm going to have to stop now. Well, not have to, but I think I shall, because I'm very happy with that design. It looks amazing. So you can see how it's picking up the light. Uh, you can see how there's different intensities of the mica. And I'll take a couple of shots when I finish this video as well, just to put in here. Here we go. Uh, and you can see how, under different light and different um, magnifications, you get different looks. It all looks amazing. If you get the chance, do have a go. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching.